The final Grand Tour of the season has arrived, guys. La Vuelta a España. Of course, Primoz Roglic starts as the massive, massive favourite to win this for the third year in a row. But so many mountains, so many hills, this could be a classic. And so we dive straight into the start list. Massive shout out to Wouty01 for doing this for us as always. But Ineos have such a good team. Carapaz, Bernal and Adam Yates. You can see the De Koenig team as well. It would be great to see Fabio Jakobsen back at the top getting a win. Same goes for Mikel Lander. Oh my word. Wouldn't we love to see Landa win at Love Welter? But like I said, the massive favourite is, of course, Primoz Roglic after winning gold medal at the Olympic Games. Movistar with their big trident, Mass, Lopez and Valverde, whilst Vlasov, who is going to bore a hands growing next season, starts as leader for Astana. And those kind of six teams are the big, big teams here with quite easily the best squads, in my opinion. You can take a look at the rest of the teams, of course, Micah. Trenton, Lucas Hamilton, Michael Matthews is here as well. Uh, DSM have Bardet, of course, he had a good Giro d'Italia. Michael Storer as well, interesting rider. I am very keen to see what he can do at this race. Shackman and Groschartner. Groschartner was just inside the top 10 at Love World's uh, last season. Giacone, maybe an undercover GC favourite for this race. Quinn Simmons as well at his first Grand Tour. Hugh Carthy, he was third last year. We'll see if he can repeat that podium performance this time around. Jasper Philipson is here. Fabio Aru, who will retire after this race, supposedly. I can't believe it. He just seems to be coming back into form as well. Guillaume Martin is here. Then we have the real um, outsider teams, I guess, who are just stage hunting at Love Welter this year. And so I've had a little think about which team I want to go for, and I'm actually going to go for Kofidis, one of the worst ranked teams according to PCM. But Guillaume Martin did win the KOM jersey last year. He got his first top 10 at the Tour de France at a Grand Tour earlier this season. I'm intrigued to see what we can do with Guillaume now really in the peak of his career. Hazel Serrada won a stage as well at Love Welter a few years ago. Really, really good breakaway rider. His brother Jose is here as well. His older, less good brother effectively. Uh, you can see the other riders on our team. Barcelo is a good young puncher like Remy Rojas, good young climber. And then we have Alagart and Morin who are two sprinters. Not the best sprinters, but we can definitely maybe... Maybe snag a stage win in the sprints. That would be awesome if we can do that with one of these two riders. But uh, a team that isn't packed full of stars. We've got some Spanish riders in the team as well, which I really wanted at Love Wells uh, this year, of course, riding on home soil. And hopefully we can make a really fun race with Cofidis. And quickly, the format of these videos, I'm going to do three stages per video rather than one stage per video. Then we can get more career and pro cyclist content out whilst Love Welter is going on. Anyway, the first stage is a 7k TT around Burgos where the first three stages do take place this season. And yeah, we don't have any good time trialists really in the team. Hazel Serrada is our best chance of a good result. But um, I think with Guillaume Martin, it's all about limiting our losses today. And so Remy Rojas gets our Grand Tour underway. This time try and Burgos does have a very short climb at the beginning of the stage where we can really try and push it maybe up to 90 in the first few kilometers. Very short TT. We shouldn't expect to see too many time gaps I believe here today. Um, only some minor gaps that won't be decisive in the final GC. Rojas can now maybe go down to 85. Now he has uh, really pressed it up that climb. We are actually second at that first intermediate early on as well. Under La Flamme Rouge, let's see where Rojas goes towards the line. Our first rider to finish and we go second place. It's not a terrible start already though. A minute between the first two finishes. This could be more telling than I expected. Now this is a rider I think could definitely win at least one stage at this Grand Tour. Quinn Simmons, the 19 year old making his Grand Tour debut. Another intriguing rider, Mary Van Sey and what can the youngster do? Maybe leading to Koenig Quickstep in the GC. Now this rider, Michael Storer, recently won the Tour de Lan. I really think Storer could potentially play a GC role in this race alongside Bardet for DSM. Watch out for Stora, guys, at the Vuelta this year. And the Ineos Grenadiers, of course, have a few GC options. Maybe, could this be Adam Yates' time? He does finish well in his uh, in his first time trial. On this occasion, Jose Herrada getting underway for us as well. Another rider that I cannot wait to see at the Vuelta this year. Mark Padoum was snubbed from the Tour de France after winning two Dauphiné stages. I don't think he's going for the GC, but definitely some stage wins for Mark Padoum. Sadly, the rider who's clearly on the best form for us, Jose Herrada, or sorry, who clearly would be our best chance in the time trial on a terrible minus two day. This is going to be a fairly difficult TC, I feel. We spent absolutely everything on that first split going up that climb. 
let's see where Harada finishes off today. It will be 24 seconds down, not too bad. Superman Lopez, of course, leading Movistar. He's very inconsistent in the time trial. This seemingly is going to be a pretty bad one as well. And I checked the other day and Tom Pickott was the second favourite, apparently, for this opening time trial. Clearly, he's not going to produce a performance of that level. Uh, in this playthrough, at least, he's 27 seconds down, but Tom Pickock, we must look out for him at his first Grand Tour. Oh, look at this. Pete Allegart on a plus two day for us. Not too bad at the first split. Hopefully, we can save something for these final few kilometers, though. So here comes Allegart towards the line. Almost catching Jeffrey Bouchard, actually. Here he comes. Maybe our best finisher so far. 15 seconds down. By far, our best finisher. Mads Schmidt is still holding on to his lead. But here comes Egan Bernal. One of the favorites for this race overall, of course. The Giro champion. He is 16 seconds down on Schmidt. Whereas for us, our GC leader, Guillaume Martin, is not on a good day at all. You can see I'm really maximising our red bar on this little climb. Hopefully that's the right tactic here today. Guillaume Martin already 17 seconds down over just a few kilometres. And here comes Guillaume into the couple few hundred metres remaining in the opener to his Vuelta Espana. He loses 39 seconds, of course. It's not going to be decisive, but it's not the best way to start after just 7k. And here come the rest of the GC favourites. Hugh Carthy crosses the line, 14 seconds down. Very good start for Hugh Carthy. Chicone is next. And Chicone, a very poor time trialer, very much like Guillaume Martin. Let's compare him to Chicone. Only one second behind Chicone. We know how bad Chicone is. Just illustrates how bad Guillaume Martin is as well, especially when Bardet is much further up the road. Maxi Shackman is next to finish. Maybe a potential winner of this TT. He is eight seconds down. Oh, look at this. Alex Vlasov in the uh, default Russian jersey. Let's see where he goes. He is very, very good here. Four seconds down on Masvert Schmitz. And look at this start for Emmerich Mas, guys. He is going to be right to the pointy end. Seven seconds down on Wirt Schmidt. Landa doing a pretty good job, I think, of limiting his losses here. Let's take a look. Mikel, come on, Landismo, across the line. How far down is Mikel going to be? 32 seconds. Uh, so only slightly ahead of Guillaume Martin. And look at this. Primoz Roglic is not going to win the opening TT. This is a massive shock. He is such a heavy favourite for this stage in real life. He's never lost a Vuelta time trial in real life. He is 15 seconds down. 34th place. What on earth is going on here, guys? Carapaz, the final rider across the line. He loses 23 seconds. And Masvert Schmidt is the winner of stage one of La Vuelta Espana. Our top five for the first time trial. Masvert Schmidt, Rob Stannard, Patrick Gamper, Omar Freyle, and Alex Vlasov. If that occurs in real life, I will... I don't know. I'll eat my hat. That is absolutely absurd stuff. Roglic so far down as well. How did Roglic lose so much time behind Pete Allegar? And that really says it all when you look at the different ambitions and levels of these two riders. Of course, Guillaume Martin, he lost a huge chunk of time, but it's not the end of the world just yet, of course. A lot of racing still to take place. Next up then, again, we're in and around Burgos. It's pretty much a flat stage set for the sprinters on Ultimar is the favourite. I'd like to see Fabio Jakobsen win, if not one of our riders though. Away we go then for stage two. We get some very, very stinky race days, particularly on Guillaume. He gets a minus five. It's lucky we don't have that for stage three. Hopefully get that out the way today. And Pete Allegart is our clear leader today in the sprint. I'm not going to join the first breakaway of this Vuelta Espana. That's for the pathetic teams that don't have real ambitions at this race. And that seemingly is the case as Yetza Bull is up the road in the breakaway alongside Ituria and I think Anton Pauza making his Grand Tour debut as well. They're the only three riders up the road. It seems it's the Koenig, Alpsin, and Group Palmer controlling things on the front. Now, we do have the first intermediate sprint coming up. I think I should have the real rules installed, so the new point system that's more suited to the sprinters, so maybe Allegart could be going after the points jersey at the Vuelta Espana this year. He's probably better than Morin, much stronger overall rider, even though maybe not quite as good as a pure sprinter, so let's see if we can snag some points here. Oh, and I've just spotted Matteo Trenton flying up on the left-hand side of the road, trying to lead out Juan Sebastian Milano. Let's try and get the jump on these guys, actually, with Allegart. Allegart, oh my word, it's very steep uphill. Didn't really realise that, and now we could be in trouble. Allegart surely going to get swamped here by Magnus, Court Nielsen, Pidcock, Jakobsen, and pretty much everyone else. Oh my word, did we even get any points there? 
I don't even know. Now, something a lot of you guys asked me to do in my Tour de France playthrough is try to use the wheels of other sprint trains in the sprints. We won a lot of sprints in that playthrough with Peter Sagan. We had a very good sprint train. We don't have that here with Koftis. So what I have done is followed Arnold Demar with Morin and then Alagart on his wheel. Let's see if we can maybe serve the Group Armour FDJ train and Alagart getting blocked off like this isn't going to be ideal. However, we do now enter the final seven and a half kilometers here. We are towards the front, not right to the front though, trying to hold that wheel of Arnold Demar, proving very difficult though. There is Jasper Philipson. We have Roglic here as well. Other riders all fighting for position. Now we have an increase in the in the rhythm and it's Morin who's in a much better position than Alagart right now. Morin is right on Arnold Demar's wheel. Alagart making a big effort trying to join his teammate up the road. It's not quite ideal but here we are following Demar. Alagart is here. Morin is here. This is pretty good right now. I might even swap to Michael Matthews. He looks great. So does Fabio Jakobsen. Alagart's been blocked in. He is done. It's Morin trying to hold the wheels and look at this. We are completely done here today. Morin's going to try and follow Fabio Jakobsen to the line. It's not going to be a good result for us in this first sprint. That's what happens when you try to follow the wheels. We're going to have a surprise winner. Tom Pickock wins the mass sprint at the World Tour Espana. Didn't quite expect that. Shea Malagart got blocked off and wasn't able to finish better than 12th place on this second stage. Well, that race didn't quite go how I planned, I can't lie. Same for Damar, Jakobsen and Philipsen, the three big favourites for this stage. And Tom Pickock has won a mass sprint. Can't believe that. Anyway, no change in the GC today. We're pretty much nowhere in the sprint competition as well. A lot of work to do on the flatter stages, but that is the approach I'm going to try and take throughout this race. Now we have the queen stage of this opening weekend in Burgos. We have the Picon Blanco, a famous climb often used at the Vuelta a Burgos, Primoz Roglic territory. He should absolutely fly up this climb compared to almost everyone else in the field. Our job with Guillaume Martin is just to try and hold on and reduce our early losses. No man, before we get underway, I can tell you this is going to be a difficult stage because Guillaume Martin does have a minus one day. Keeping up with Roglic on a race day like this is going to be neon impossible. However, let's try and join the breakaway today. Remy Rojas is going to be the man to try and follow this early move. However, I must say it's been very difficult to join the breakaway so far. Really, the Peloton haven't allowed the breakaway to go. Trying to get Harada now in the breakaway. Jose Harada, not even Jesus Harada. He's not allowed to go without a VT chasing us down. However, finally a breakaway is allowed to go. Only three riders as well. Harada, Amai and Arashiro are here. We do have a sizable fall behind. Luis Leon Sanchez does fall. Let's just check everyone does indeed get back on their bikes. But Harada is just here to really drop back and help out Guillaume Martin later in the stage. Sander Amai has just tried an attack. Only 1.5k to go until this KOM. We may as well try and challenge for this, I feel, with Jose Harada. May be able to take the jersey at some point early on in this race. Let's press on at maybe 87, 90. We don't don't have very much acceleration at all. We have to rely on our raw climbing ability. Let's go for the line. Our Mai is done. Arashiro hopefully is done as well. And Harada does take maximum points. Perfect. We do have some fairly strong crosswinds right now, actually. We are coming up to this intermediate sprint as well. So I think Alucard may as well try to take some more points or try and gain some points. We only have five at the moment. So only one K to go suddenly. Alucard is going to try and jump out to the left-hand side. And for some reason, no one really going for these points, which means Alucard can jump right back up into contention we're into the top 10 and for some reason israel startup nation are the team to work really really hard on the front right now surely they're not working for mads Schmidt to try and hold on to red today i think that is going to be out of his depth they are working so hard to bring in this breakaway giving us no chance at all so the breakaway are caught but i would like to take these k1 points with harada to hopefully secure that jersey. Oh, we won't have enough points. I think the winner today will take the KOM jersey. Nonetheless, Harada may as well try. You can see the road up to that climb looking absolutely stunning. Let's try an early attack. I don't think we have the punch, the raw acceleration to beat the other guys who may be trying to go for this jersey. So Harada tries to kick from the bottom. Yono Zagiri follows. Okay, this is interesting. Let's see who else tries to follow now. Hopefully Harada can hold off his Zagiri, but he is a much better rider than Harada. And look... At the gap, he is closing so quickly and so easily. And look at Yono Zagiri go. He is continuing to attack up the road. Harada has been caught by the Peloton. I think we're going to have to settle for second place here. Yono Zagiri, different level to Harada. Hopefully we can beat Barde, who is pacing up this climb. And we just hold on for second place. Five points for us. Is Zagiri is... Oh, 
Mikel Landa's attacking. Mikel Landa is attacking. Roglic is following. What is going on? Mayhem here at the Throw to Espana. But we were caught so far out of position there. Luckily, everything does come back together and calm down quite quickly because Guillaume Martin was so far back in that peloton. Oh, we got away with it. So Guillaume Martin is trying to make his way up through the traffic here without spending too much of his energy early on. And now, Lucas Hamilton and Gianluca Brambilla are the riders to attack ahead of the Pecan Blanco. That is a very risky move, I would suggest, because this is a very difficult climb, but look at the gap. They have quickly opened up over a minute on this peloton. Okay, here we come into the foot of the Pecan Blanco. This is such a difficult climb, and we are not quite in position compared to the rest of our teammates even. Guillaume Martin is struggling so much with positioning here today. Let's try and set a rhythm with the rest of our guys as Bardet, Mass, Roglic, Chicone all attack. Yates and Landon more cautious this time. Same with Egan Bernal. And we're trying to stay at the front. The road is narrowing though. This is going to be difficult. Okay, so situation. Hamilton and Brambea are still up the road. Bardet and Chicone now have a gap on everyone else. We're trying to just set a steady rhythm with Guillaume Martin staying in a reasonable position now to be fair. So we we only have 4k to go here. Guillaume Martin does need to make his move. I'm pretty sure of that. Remy Rojas doing a really good ride here. Brambia and Hamilton still have a gap on this group and we just cannot move up. Look at this. We're getting blocked off on the narrow roads. Now Giacone attacks. Barze, Landa are the riders to be following. Finally, those riders have been caught and Brambia pacing for Giulio Giacone. Guillaume Martin still in this chasing group. 3k to go in the climb. So we're in and around riders like Emric Mass. Lopez is here. I can see Jack Haig as well. Harada is starting to struggle. We have 2k to go. I think we have the energy. Uh, you can see I've lowered the camera to see Mikel Landa accelerate away past Giulio Giacone on the peak on Blanco. I think we have enough energy here with Guillaume Martin to really go quite hard in these final kilometers if Shackman and everyone else can simply get out of the way. Everyone else in our team is done. 1.3k to go. Let's go up to 90. Roglic is still in this group. All of the Ineos team are as well. I think Guillaume Martin should finish pretty well. And Landa has cracked. Mikel Landa has cracked. And it's going to be Giulio Giacone winning on the peak on Blanco. What a ride from Giulio Giacone. Roglic will be second in the end. Then we have Egan Bernal. Guillaume Martin with a very good ride here to finish with Yates Vlasov and Wouter Pools. I hope we can cling on to his wheel ahead of the likes of Richard Carapaz and all of the riders you're seeing. Lopez Bardet, Hugh Carthy as well. And that is a solid performance on a minus one day for Guillaume Martin, even if we lose the wheel of Vlasov and Wouter Pools very slightly. So Julio Giacone takes the final victory of today's episode. Really nice ride at the Picon Blanco. I thought Mikel Landa had it, but Landa's mode did crack just in that final kilometre. On a minus one day though, Guillaume Martin, we had some struggles out of position a lot, but we can only be delighted with that performance today, especially when you see Carthy, Lopez, Barze, all of these riders behind us in the GC. But even after everything, that terrible time trial, Primoz Roglic is the rider in the red jersey. For us, you can see the full GC on screen, of course. Guillaume Martin is just outside the top 10, only by three seconds. So we've had a good start considering we've had that dreaded time trial for us. We're there or thereabouts, I guess, in the sprint jersey with Pete Allegart. We missed out on the KOM, that goes to Chicone, but Harada is there or thereabouts. Maybe we can snag that for a couple of stages. Let me know what you think of this three-stage format though, guys. Hopefully it opens up the opportunity to do some different videos whilst the Vuelta is still on, whilst giving you the full playthrough as well. Let me know what you thought in the comments of today's video. Drop a sub and a like on the video as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.